Hello everyone, this is Valhalla Gaming CV, and this is the channel that plays everything so you don't have to. Today we are back again with Botany Manor. This is going to be part 5 in the series. If you guys aren't caught up, go ahead and click that button on the top right of the screen. That'll be the playlist so you can get all caught up with us. And let's get back into it. Alright, let's head to the formal gardens. Alright. See where this thing is. If I remember right. Oh, it might. No, where was it? Let's look at the map. If you're lost, look at the map. Maps. And the formal garden is number 13. Ah, okay. It's through the kitchen area. Let's go. We got this. Through the kitchen. Okay, I lied. It was through the back, uh, back terrace. Went to the kitchen, didn't find nothing. Okay, it's right there. We found it. Let's get in there. We got three more plants, I think. A formal garden. This must be the nice area. Lime it up. Ooh. Three new plants added. Oh, it's fancy over here. Well, they got a nice picnic and everything. Anything else over here that I can grab? What's this? Newspaper article. Bonnet's illustrated penny paper. It was a message. Local man reports mysterious signal. A gentleman farmer has reported sightings of mysterious blinking light coming from caves near his home in Cheddar. In his own words, I was walking my dog and lost track of time a little. It soon became dark and I decided to make the walk back home. On the way to my house is a tiny cave. And as I walked by, I noticed a blinking light pattern case from the cave entrance. I was sure it was one of those Morse code messages. When I approached the cave, the light source vanished and nobody was there. I'm convinced that what I saw was the Morse code abbreviation for attention. I will never forget that one abbreviation as it was the first message I learned in Morse code. Local authorities have assured our journalists that there have been no recent military activities or exercise in the area, so the mystery remains unsolved. <laughs> I know that's what it was because I learned Morse code and that's the only thing I learned. Ooh. We're gonna have to fill this up. That's cool. Ooh, we got a seed. Oh, it goes way out here. Hello. Which one is this? Spring dance shrub. Flowering bush used to grow in the gardens, but has completely disappeared when I was off on my travel. Well, we're gonna have to figure out why. Imagine trimming that up. Get that weed whacker out. Okay, we got this. Oh, we don't need to do that. Let's, uh, we'll leave that alone for now. Let's do some more researching on what we gotta do. See if we can find anything else to read. Oh, this is kind of big, look. It goes all the way out here, too. Alright, let's take our time around here. Telegraph note. Mr. Bennett, the telegraph you ordered arrived while you were off on your travels. They delivered it by boat. I left it at the boathouse, since I didn't know where you'd like to keep it. There appears to be a Morse code manual inside the case as well, Jimmy. Okay, so something with Morse code. We, uh, just like that previous one. I have to figure that out. And... Note about lawn. My sweet Hazel, are you keeping well today? Jimmy's only gone and broken the lawn mower again. If it weren't for my war injury, I wouldn't be letting him loose with the mower. He said he ran over some hard objects down in the long grass near the pond, but with my bad leg I couldn't get down there to check. I had a brief look and couldn't see anything. Sometimes I wonder about the boy's sensibilities. Save me some of your lovely scones. Here is always Mr. Bennett. Some scones, man. Sounds good. Oh, here we go. Manual of Military Engineering, Section 4, Communication Over Long Distances. The method of communication over long distances must be selected according to the requirements of the scenario. If the message contains no sensitive information, or there is no enemy presence within the communication area, an open method of communication such as telegraphy may be used. If open communication is permissible, both receivers may still benefit from the abbreviation of messages. See Plate 2 for a table of commonly used military abbreviations using telegraphy and Morse code. Closed communication methods rely more upon both technologies and ingenuity. In the case of secrecy and obs obfuscation, uh, planning is required and both parties must have knowledge of the method of encryption used. 
Section 4, number 3, a brief history of long-range military communications. Ooh, we got some reading. Ancient Greece, water telegraphy and torch telegraphy. Ancient Rome, smoke signaling. 16th century, beacons and pigeons. 18th century, Murray Shatter Telegraph. 18th century, radiated telegraph. 19th century, Morse code. Telegraphy abbreviations in prosigns. R is Roger, transmission received, over, invitation to transmit, out, end of transmission, await, I must pause, please wait, verified, message is verified, uh, say again, request for repetition, correction, proceed, text was an error, and break, start new section of message, attention, message begins, over and out, end of contact. We're going to have to look back at that when we can actually do that. Oh, they got guano. That's bat poop. Wood ash, seaweed, manure, coffee, peat. These are all fertilizers. And what's this? The Flower Growing Companion, a monthly illustrated journal. Tips for growing hydrangeas. Or hydrangeas. Hydrangeas are beautiful flowers that contain athnic science, uh, which is a pigment that can change color depending on the pH level of its environment. The colors can vary between red, purple, and blue. You guys are going to just hate on me in them comments about how I can't pronounce this stuff. I know it. Oh, look at all these pots. Okay, garden supplies. New materials for garden pots. Granite and terracotta. Sandstone, marble, and obsidian. Okay, we're going to have to figure out what kind of pot it wants. And some fertilizer for whichever plant that is. And then one of them needs Morse code. I don't know exactly how I'm going to be doing that, but it's also telegraph, so maybe... Flashes of light or something. Um, kind of like those SOS. Oh, we're on the other side of this now. Blocked by a darn table. Oh, we got some fool's emerald. This one looks cool. A friend gifted me these seeds, so I don't know much about them. The marvel of bioluminescence. In the darker corners of our world, there are plants and organisms that are able to produce their own light. These plants, fungi, and insects are most often found in areas of low light, such as dark forests, deep oceans, and gloomy caves. Recent discoveries show that chemicals such as luciferin, luciferin are responsible for this glowing effect. It is not known what this glowing effect is used for, but it could be a communication with others of the same species or to attract pollinators or food. Scientists believe there are many bioluminescent species waiting to be discovered. Those are really cool. Kind of like the... I think it's like the angler fish in the Marianas Trench. That's really deep. They're like blind, but they got lights on them. Uh, plant chemicals. Jasmine, poppy, opium. Ooh. They got the drugs in here, man. Uh, oh, luciferin. Cool's emerald. Isn't that the one we're trying to make? Yeah. Okay. Let's see what else we got around here. Sincere greetings. Dearest Arabella, I was delighted after our recent mentoring session. You do excellent work as a fellow scholar of the natural world. I recall the spring dance shrub that once grew in your garden before you departed on your travels. How wonderful it would be to see it growing again. I have been compiling plant specimens that require pollination to mature into their adult stage. I wonder if the spring dance shrub is one of these plants. Ever your affectionate friend, Lavinia. Okay, so clearly we need to get some chemical compounds out of some stuff. We got two seeds, I think, so far. We got the Fool's Emerald, the Spring Dance Shrub, and we need to get the Ocelotti. Okay, let's go to this other area over here. What's this? The bird. There you go, bird. Am I supposed to fly you somewhere? I don't know what I'm supposed to do with this thing. Clearly I'm supposed to take it somewhere over here. Fly, birdie. It's not going to it. Maybe I'm moving up too fast on it. There you go. 
Okay, you can't get too close. Maybe there's another one. Can I open this? Ah, look at that. It goes back to the old place. Uh, we got some granite. Okay, we got uh, soil pH research. This is a whole whole uh, grid here or table to show us. And what's this? Anthean and aside research, spring dance shrubs. Okay, different colors for pigment. There's got to be another feeder. Goes all the way over there. Dear Miss Green, I have recently heard of your involvement in the mentoring of aspiring botanists. Botany is a field that demands a thorough understanding of its complexities, and while I admire your dedication, the saying, the blind leading the blind, does come to mind. All just aside, I do hope your endeavors in mentoring will yield some semblance of progress. Sincerely, Professor Thornton, 1887. And I feel like every time she gets a letter from these people, they just freaking, they start throwing shade at her. Okay, let's see. Uh, my dearest Bennett, thank you so much for the lovely bunch of rhubarb from your nephew's garden. He needn't have sent anything in return for the herbal poultice I gave him for his little one. But I am grateful all the same. I know he hasn't the money to fetch the doctor. Since you said he cannot read a note, please send him my thanks when you see him. Faithfully yours, Hazel. Yeah. I'm making medicine. Like I said, botany is good. Good stuff. Anything over here? This place is so big. Mixed seeds. For garden birds. Prepared by Freewind's Garden and Farmstead Supply Company. Highest quality, hygienically blended, attracts a host of garden birds such as bluebirds, finches, robins, and warblers with this seed prepared at the highest quality levels. Simply spread the seeds on an appropriate bird table or feeder surface and observe the delights of your feathered garden neighbors. Yep, here's another one. So we're gonna have to move that bird over here somehow. I'd imagine, since we can't be close to it, we're gonna have to just alternate them. And then try to stay away from it. So if there's the birds over on this feeder, let's put it right there. Now I'd imagine if we get too close, it's going to fly all the way home. So let's be very careful now. And this one's right next to it. We're going to have to go this way. Come on, birdie. Go around again. It's gonna take a sec, but to do it the right way means I don't have to do it twice. Okay. Now we gotta go get the feeder. And the birdie's gonna wanna come to this one. Good job, birdie. Let's grab this feeder and go down into the hedges. And when I do it, I gotta go run the other way. Run. Mm. The other way. Careful now. I gotta go all the way around. There's a reason why it's open on these sides. go. There you go, birdie. Follow you. Come back around. There's that bird that's right there. And boom. Run, run, run. run for your life. Don't let the birdie get scared away. It knows where the food is. Alright, let's go this way. And run. Okay, it's there. Okay, we're gonna have to be real careful. The close one. I can't go back that way. Okay, we're gonna go around. 
Yeah, we're going this way. Be cool, birdie. I'm doing this for you. Oh, man. Okay, I gotta be real careful. That bird's right there. And if I mess this up... Okay, well, what I could probably do is this. There we go. Okay, let's leave her there. Now I gotta figure out what plant needs that bird. Let's go look for some clues. And this one is in the boathouse. I don't even know where that is. Well, the bird's there, so let's leave the bird there. Where would I find said boathouse? Not over here, right? Oh, this goes right back to the front. Let's see. Oh, maybe... Oh, it goes down here. We haven't gone down here yet. Oh, look at that. Got a whole pond. How cool is that? Oh, we got a painting. Nice. Unfinished painting. Achievement. Got an art lover out there. What else we got around here? Oh, the boathouse is over there. I bet it's locked in it. Yep, we gotta find a key. And what is this? A handle. Oh. It's a handle for maybe the fountain? Or a water or something. Inspect. Okay, we gotta figure out where we're gonna put that. Just uh, put that down for a second. Spiritualism book. Note attached to the book, my dearest cousin, whilst I hold a deep fascination for the pursuit of knowledge and science, I must admit that the subject of spiritualism is not one that particularly captivates me. Therefore, I must return this book to you. However, I appreciate your efforts in sharing your interest with me with affection. Arabella, let let's see, Phenomenon of Spiritualism. The Willow Wisp. A glowing spirit of marshes, forests, and caves, the Willow Wisp is an eerie ab apparition that has long been the subject of both fear and fascination. It makes its appearance to lost travelers in dark, isolated places and beckons them to follow with its beguiling, blinking light. Many a wanderer has followed the wisp alluring light across marshes or into caves, never to be seen again. Take heed those who venture into dark places, resist the temptation of the will-o'-wisp, uh, shimmering radiance, turn back before it's too late. Spoopy. Okay, we got a fenced off area. That fountain is on. I'm guessing for the other area we gotta fill up, I'd imagine. Okay, let's see if there's a some kind of handle uh opening around here. Maybe it's right up here. Yep. Get that water in there. Very cool. Oh, does that mean we can travel? Oh, that's cool. Frogger. It's in here. Oh, this is where we gotta put that plant, probably. Into the darkness. That's kind of weird. You feel like my lady is either really tall or I don't know. The camera angle is weird. Okay, this one is for. Which one was it? So let's see if we can just do one of these. Uh, Fool's Emerald Spring Dance Shrub. Plant Chemicals. I would imagine that this one's the Plant Chemicals. And... Let's see... I'm imagining one of... Which one actually... Uh, Makes light, I wonder. Trying to figure that out. So we know that the chemical compounds in wildflowers. This one is called the plant chemicals. Which we know is that one. Bioluminous. Bioluminescence. It's 
plants and fungi. So one of the plants glows. We don't know which one that is yet. And then this one. Spring Dan Shrub. Uh, one screw in your uh, garden, departed on your travels, however. I recall the Spring Dan Shrub that one screw in your garden before you departed. On your travels, how wonderful it would be to see it growing again. I've been compiling plant specimens that require pollination to mature into the adult stages, and I wonder if a spring dance shrub is one of these plants. So it needs pollination, so I would imagine the spring dance shrub is the one that needs a bird. Okay, so bird seeds. And then this is the greeting card, right? Yeah. I would imagine the greeting card goes with it. Let's see. The water's flowing now. Maybe you have to go to the bathroom or something. Now, we're gonna need... Maybe we need a certain pot for that one. I'm not sure yet. Let's look around some more. We gotta see if we got all the clues. We got the pot. Flower growing companion for growing hydrangeas. Hydrangeas are beautiful flowers that contain uh, anthocyanins, which is a pigment that can change color depending on the pH level of its environment. Okay, so flowering bush completely disappeared. It deceived. I wonder if that's this one. Soil, pigment, I'm going to start throwing it in. Pot catalog, hydrangeas, nope, throw in the guesses, okay none of that, none of that. So which one needs the a special pot? Guano, Ashby, let's see. This one is for the Morse code. Lovely scones. This one was talking about the... What was it? Note about the lawn. So that gave us the, um, the location of the handle. The telegraph you ordered arrived while you were on the travels. They delivered some of the boat. There appears to be a Morse code manual inside the case as well. So we can't do the Morse code thing until we get in the boathouse. So we gotta find a key somewhere. And I would imagine the one spring dance shrub. That's the one that probably needs the birds. And did we find all the clues? Definitely not. Bird garden. We're still missing a clue there. And telegraph. Okay, let's see where the... We got a map, so... Bird garden and telegraph. Maps. Okay, that's second floor. Oh, it gave more numbers on this one. It's bigger now. So, bird garden is 16. Okay, and then... Where's the telegraph? I don't see where the telegraph was. The grotto, pond, side terrace. All right, let's head to the the bird garden again. And we clearly missed one here. So let's see what information we didn't get here. This takes us back, so that's not the way. What have we not gotten here? So this is the pigment thing in the soil research. any notes around here there's something I missed pretty sure I got this letter from Hazel oh the bird garden is over here that bird's out of there now oh here we go boat house nice got the boathouse key and we got a bird poster let's see 
Just like bees, birds can pollinate flowers, but did you know that birds have a preference to pollinate flowers of certain colors? The above chart shows which color of flowers attract which birds to your garden. Red flowers, the bullfinch robin. Okay. So what? let's see what this bird looks like. It's black with a white stomach, it looks like. Can you see? Nope. It's uh, got an orange face and a white stomach and like a gray back. Looks like a bullfinch. So the bullfinch. Robin. Yeah. Um, so the bullfinch is the red flowers it needs. So it's attracted to red flowers, so we got to make it red. Let's see if that's all the clues for that one. Uh, let's get back to it. Index. Chapter 5. And we got the bird poster. There it is. So that okay, so the pots I need to do for it, and the soil pH levels. So let's see what we need to do. We got to get it to be red. So what does it need to get to the red level? We got to go back to that chart for the pH levels. So red is between 12 and 14. For pH. Let's write that down. Okay, wrote that down, and let's see what this one is. Um, soil pH research. So we got it be between 12 and 14. So 13.2, I see that one. That's got to be the one. So sandstone and seaweed. Okay, we got sandstone and seaweed we got to work on. So we need a sandstone pot, and it's going to be the spring dance shrub. Uh, I think I went the wrong way. Where am I going? I gotta go back this way. So over here. Let's go get the sandstone. Let's see which one was it? I think it's that brown one up top. That's marble, sandstone. This is sandstone. Okay. And we gotta put the shrub in it. That there, some dirt, and sand, uh, the spring dance shrub. Let's water it up. Okay, it's white. Now we gotta go over here and put some seaweed on it. There you go. Make it red. Yeah. Now that it's red, we can take it to the bird. To pollinate it. Just like the bees do. And we already got the bee or the, the bird over there. We just gotta put this on the table and redo it. It's right there. Okay, nice and easy. Nice and easy now. There you go. Let's go around to the other side so the bird don't run away. Put it back. Oh yeah. It's doing it. Nice. We have got it. Oh wow. Look at all the birds coming back. Awesome. Spring dance shrub. That's the way to do it. The spring dance shrub contains anthocyanin. I, ca I can't say that word. Uh, causing it to change colors depending on the pH levels of the environment. Robins love red flowers and will be attracted to red variants of this shrub. Yes. Let's go put this thing in the plant room. Okay, we're back in the plant room. And boom. We got two more left. All right. Progress is being made. Hey everyone, you made it to the end of the video. Thanks for watching. On the bottom of the screen, if you like, comment, share, subscribe, you can support the channel. Also, check out the videos above. That'll take you to more content from Valhalla Gaming TV. Thanks again. Later.